What's up, everybody? Good morning. Market's open. No time for intro. <laughs> Love y'all. All right, let's get ready. I need all my stuff open up here. Hang tight. Maps open. Those are meter version day. How cool is that? All right, let's let's go. Hold on, get that camera feed going on here. Wait a minute. All right. All right, my I can't my things are all messed up a little bit. Okay. All right, VIX is below triple V. Finally looking good for the bull market. Looking nice, uh, nice and steady. No irrational, no irrational, no irrational here. Looking good. Um, let's see what we got. One second. Oh my goodness. Hold on one second. All right, what's everybody? We're back. All right. We're back. Y'all can hear me. Uh, sorry about that. All right. Um, Universal short up. Nothing really. Again, another day right there, right? Okay, so it's a no trade day again until something interesting happens. Uh, I'm, I keep turning off monthly head structure because it's way off the screen and I don't want to um, jack up the auto scaling. So any break becomes a BLU. Let's look at that. We're gonna look at our DD band. So that's basically where the upper targets would be, um, where those DD bands are right here. Let's go ahead and mark them. Um, we're kind of in the middle, I would say. So I'm just gonna arbitrarily mark them. I'll change them as soon as we get there. So spy, no trade. BQQ, BLU, let's look at the liquidity map. First thing you're gonna do is come through, get your liquidity maps together. Belong up is open, blue open on support. It's a little V-shape. Um, so there is, Interaction with blue, open, blue, open, kind of happen. Now this tucked into a liquidity pocket to do so. Um, normally you wouldn't do that. So once you hit the middle, remember liquidity pockets are random from here. Keep an eye on DD still positive. Uh, it's gonna be like the last four days. What happens? Do we stay in the bull zone or do we fall out and lose it? Keep in mind, open in bull zone, tend to close in bull zone, open above hedge, tend to close above hedge. You have sector rotation, one's hedge break up, one's hedge break down. Those are always great signs when they rotate different directions. <laughs> Okay, so it means that the bear market's still not here. Um, you know, when people are safely rotating from one to the next, uh, it's not a terrible sign. It looks like UVXY still rebalancing those old options way down here, so it's gonna be hard to get a good liquidity map uh, until those new tickers come through due to the reverse split. So what you can do uh, is you can take these numbers here, multiply them by 10, and you can feel for it. It's roughly what the split was, I believe. So, i.e., this would be a 10. This would be a 25. This would be a 20. So the reverse split has us on this, so we don't adjust for that. So just let you know, they have a new, new, new set of options. All right, so looking okay. Let's look at some Tesla, some stocks. Everybody smash that like button real quick. I'll give you all a couple seconds to do that. Where I talk further. Let's get 100 likes on that screen. Let's go. <laughs> Let me go see. Look at the test server. We're going to have futures trading. So I'm so excited. He said he loaded some new code on the test server. Daddy, get to play with it today. Ooh. Oh, that's exciting now. Let me just uh, show you. Let me show you. I want to see something. I'm going to show you something. I 
I know this is a uh, rudimentary, but uh, it's got basic. This isn't what the design is gonna look like. He just has it there for the testing case. But look at this. There you go. It's your features, login, your account manager, your trading account, positions you're in. Ooh. Sexy. Uh, it's messed up, but also if you want the new options, it's gonna be a new ticker. I don't know what the new ticker is uh, from our API, but like I'm, I think I like think or swim. I think it's UVXY one. We would just have to adjust. Um, I don't know if it actually produces candle data. Whatever. See, I don't know what it would be. The options have different tickers. The the ticker has the same thing. So that's where the conflict would come on our end. Like you would have to have um, this ask for the options with the new ticker. So when you do a reverse split, typically they designate a new option. Ticker name, so that's it. That's pretty pretty cool, right? So obviously, um, now here's one of the things: the account manager stuff that we're going to be doing. Uh, that's not going to be up here. I'm going to put that in a tab like this. I'm also going to split the pane into two different tabs, so you can have two different windows. The ability to like grab scanner and drag it to the right side, so that you can have two side by side panes down here. You can like have your account like this, your DOM like that. Actually, I'm gonna have your DOM be full screen. So when you open the DOM, um, it's gonna go here and scoot everything over. So DOM will go full screen because you're gonna want your DOM full screen always, right? Um, you have the option to do that or have your DOM be above here. I think the, the default will be this and then we'll later on the road program it to where you can do up and down. Then I'm gonna have two sections of the scanner. So your account information, you can click and drag to here, all your account stuff. So that's it. The login and he's been he's been doing it. He says it works great on his end now. Um, oh, that's the DOM. I can go play with that. Let me go see what that looks like. Okay, what is the Let me get stick in there? Okay, cool. So no action today. Uh, it's long long side up today, but long up on spy. I'd say, oh, well, you know what? Uh, today is actually a bullish day. So this is Bullong up on SPY. So these are all bullish days today. Again, no shorting, right? For me, this is all a good deal. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a ticker. I'm gonna, I don't know the ticker designation, how we do it. So I'm going to get him to give me the list real quick. I know, I'm so excited. Can't wait, you guys. All right. All right. Okay, so let's take a look at everything we have today. Resilience is positive, means we support at the middle of the box. DD was positive, which means that in the bull zone, uh, you look to support in the bull zone, obviously when we open in mean reversion, wall to middle becomes random. So it hasn't touched the middle at all. So this is a great sign. Um, so when you open mean reversion, remember the rule is wall. Once you touch a wall, then you touch a middle, it's random, just like on the liquidity map. So today, uh, there is no random designation just yet. Um, the market has completely avoided the balance points illiquid to the upside. Uh, any hedge break supporting at half gap was the long. Now, if you missed it uh, and you were trying to make a trade, it's quick out the door. The last four days is the same exact move. Two of the days didn't work. 
Uh, two of the days didn't work out. Turn. One of the days didn't work out. One of the days worked out great. One of the days worked out for a little bit and then fell yesterday. Today would have worked out great. So the idea is that, you know, obviously it's a good, anytime you break to the bull side, my rule is I always find every excuse to be a bull. I always will take a long anytime I can. In a bull market, any bull break I get and say that the last four days would have been win, loss, win, loss. But if you have good risk management and your risk reward is good enough, then it was worth it. So that's it. Um, bull long up is always a good sign. Let's do some stocks. You guys want to put some up in here? type in a test ticker here. All right, so this is our futures data. Oh, that is sexy. You guys ready? You guys ready for the reveal? For the first time, you're ready to see Rocket Scooter Futures? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all wanna get some hype? Let's go, let's get some rock in the chat, let's go. I want to see it. I already see it. Already, already, already. I'm about to pull it. I'm about to show you. Now. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Let's do this. Hold on. There's our test symbol here. Here we go. There's our Dom. In its barest form whatsoever. Dom. Killing it. There's our account manager. Connections. I can't show you all that yet. Um, but where our brokers are and everything. Here's the actual Dom. Ooh, that's clean. Ooh, that's nice. Oh, and that's real time too. Oh, that's beautiful. Ooh, that's lovely. Actually, no, he is doing the Dom in the little window like this. Actually, I like this better. I'm glad he's doing this instead of full screen. Sometimes they have better ideas than I do. That's beautiful. Now the account manager, I wanna see if I can minimize. Ah, there, oh, beautiful. Oh, that's lovely. So that is actually here and not in the tab there. I actually think that I'm gonna leave it like that as well. That is pretty cool. That's very low limited real estate, but obviously I don't know if I want to do is this you can open up without losing your scanner. That actually is a nicer feature. I do like it like that. What do y'all think? So account manager where you'd be able to see your account, your notification, account summary, log, orders, all of that different from the rest of this? Or would you guys like it in a tab? Tell me you want. This is fucking cool. This is amazing. <laughs> Ooh. Get some likes and chat. Let's go. That looks really good. So, um, ah, I love it. Can you pop out the Dom? Uh, you should be able to, but I'll have to put in a note to that. Okay. As long as you see the open PL, I'm I want to see the open PL somewhere, even when the account manager is minimized. So maybe an idea is you all you never want to lose sight of your trades, right? So if you're in a trade, it needs to say so right here. Also, I'm gonna put in something so that people can't. I'm gonna put something and make sure that you're connected to a live account. It says live, can a demo account? It says demo Brighton Center. I'm not gonna have the amb ambiguity like like other trading platforms that don't give a shit about not being fraudulent. That just, you can trade in the real environment and the live environment looks the same. Like you had a Ninja Trader. I hate when people post Ninja Trader results because they don't put any designation to prevent fraud, right? 
Ninja Trader, you can be in a paper account. You never know the difference. I'm gonna make sure if you post a chart and a picture of rocks here, you're gonna see this paper. It's not paper. It's not real. I can have anybody use my platform to front up paper results for sure. That's for damn sure. So we're gonna put something in here to make sure it says live with account number or something or live with something. Don't forget to be able to do that. I have to remember. I don't want, you know what I'm saying? When people post from Thinkorswim, uh, you know, there's ways that you can tell the difference. I'm gonna say if you post anything here, there's gonna be a watermark somewhere that, that I will know. Posting your paper results on Twitter and saying you made millions of dollars trading. You have an ethical responsibility to the industry. Thinkorswim has, you can crop out the little green indicators and then you wouldn't know it's paper. At the 24 above the SPY, then you would know. So you know what I mean? Trade, trading view, same thing. How you know it's paper or not? I'll make sure. So I'm scared level one or level two. This is what level two is. Level two data is depth of market. Level one is best best bid and ask. So level one is the surface quotes. Oh, and by the way, guys, look, 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 look. We have Russell Resilience. Let's actually, let's see if it's in here. Uh, maybe it's not in here yet. It's just the placeholder. So Russell said so Russell Resilience, connect the Discord. Futures trading is all coming out in like two weeks. So this is it. We're ready to play. This would be your login to authenticate to the futures, uh, to the, the futures pathway for your brokers. Um, connections would be you would connect to different brokers, tie them on the, the rock theater. I can't reveal how this works yet. This will be launched with a reveal. But make sure you subscribe today, and you got to get Pro Plus. Upgrade to Pro Plus to get access to this. I like the DOM looks pretty smooth. Now the color scheme we're obviously going to play with, um, but it's clean as shit. I do like it. Um, love the order but colors oh you actually like the colors that's kind of cool so obviously like we would be looking for you know making the platform uh design look the same as um oh they even have buttons here to buy and sell at the market oh that's pretty hot Look at this. I'm not actually logged into an account, but uh, I don't want to start messing with this on the screen, but buy market, sell market, so I can actually order. One click order while trading without the DOM being open. Uh, yes, that's pretty hot. I like that idea. Now, this must be a trading view thing. See, I never, I never played with this part of Trading View. You can change the quantity uh, in between the. How do you do that? Top left, just between the buttons too. Yeah, it's the Trading View API for futures. It seems exactly like what it is. One tick, close the contract in TV. It has a spread on here. Play it on demo account. RS. Yeah, that's pretty dope. Yeah, and that's why I said we like that's why we source trading view so we can get all the all the all the things from the from the junkyard. We always say it. You know, junkyard has a car. We're building we're building a supercar, so we get to go to the junkyard and find all the best parts and then snap them together. We don't nobody has time to, to build a DOM and all these basic things from scratch. Trust me when I say the bigger things we're building is the real reason Rocket Scooter is gonna be dominating the world so this is just a cool formality i like this and everybody needs to trade in the same place they're looking at their stuff and I, i'm like okay awesome we can spend years building all that from scratch no time for that you guys want it turn it on let's go obviously trading view has the best literally the best web-based trading platform on the planet i mean it's just so good you can't you can't beat it so that's why they they source the developers like us. Just like Discord was a Slack clone, Slack was the the kernel underneath Discord. Everybody uses Discord, right? You didn't know that that's Slack. Discord built their company on top of Slack, built out. So like you have the framework, and then people build their stuff on top of it. White labeling is a it's a huge business for a lot of these companies. 
and give you a really good sandbox to play in, which is awesome. Our developers are killing us. Fucking great. I'm excited. So um, be able to log into your account. Account manager is here. So we'll have a, we'll have a little demonstration today where I want all of you guys, we're gonna here, we're going to pick it apart, uh, and we're going to work on this and do some graphical... Uh, adjustments basically we'll get your we'll get your feedback so everybody come to the rocket scooter uh zoom call today i'll have all the pro plus members only so today will be a pro plus only zoom call if you upgrade make sure you upgrade you come to that we're gonna we're gonna pick apart the platform we're gonna send some test orders we're gonna do everything and i'm, I'm gonna let everybody here pick and choose and vote on every little detail of this and you can be part of the trading platform design and we're gonna send these notes back to the development team we're gonna have them put everything in the way that we want it we're looking for functionality And I release tomorrow. <laughs> we get a thousand likes on YouTube. That'd be dope, right? Uh, today will be at exactly noon, noon o'clock today. All right. So Tesla bullshit up. So let's take a look at the market. Uh, we got a couple dips in SPY that were definitely worth it as we're sitting here uh, anybody take that long up the middle I'm not trading today I, I should be but I, I just I rolled up into the stream late Oh, this is sweet. This is great. So anytime breaking bull long up, I always take a long. I always try to off of something. Supporting hedge pressure along to next resistance, next resistance across the box. Um, if I were to trim, it could be a runner to uh, upper DD band. So really nothing today that's super alarming. Let's go ahead and look at the scanner and pull up some tickers. Okay, it's your first day or first week here. Let me know it's your first day or your first week so I can't help you out a little bit. You're absolutely lost. So throw me a ticker. We can do a little analysis here. First week, Simon. Oh, okay, okay. How you been? How you been handling and liking it, Simon? So far, we've had markets opening and in inside of mean reversions four days in a row. So, in in this particular balance, the market is not so easy to figure out. But one thing is for sure, not a single one of us, I think, here has popped that short button the entire week. May anybody here try to short this? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing about this market is showing short setups, right? Now, there are scalps in the way, but the four mean reversion days we had in a row, the market's just drifted up all four of those days, right? That's DD. DD's just showing bullish. Every single day, this number being greater than half is bullish, right? The only two scalps. Yeah, let's go. Bidding home sales in seven minutes. Give a little bit of volatility there. That's actually going to be a pretty decent catalyst uh, potential. So let's go through that. Uh, let's also analyze the unemployment data today. So these are parts, uh, and the GDP is a huge deal. Jobless claims. These are parts of my big theory. Totally forgot about that. Get so excited about futures. Okay, uh, another tick down on jobless claims. Check. Woo whoop. GDP quarter over quarter growth positive. Whoop whoop. All right. Initial jobless claims. Did those come down? Actually, those came down. Baby, we're out of this recession. We're out. My theory's right. My theory's right. We are leaving the recession. I told I was on the Training Camp podcast yesterday, and they were saying, they were going, Matt, you were making some bold calls last year. You called the bottom in October, and you were right. And I was like, I know, you remember those streams? And they go, yeah, you were trading like JP Morgan and Google and Apple, and you made like 2,000 something percent on each trade. And I was like, that's right. The minute everybody, I remember Apple earnings, I bought before earnings, and then Apple earnings three days later, I bought the dip again. Uh, and market pivoted that week. And then from there, I said we're gonna double top probably. Everyone, everyone, the whole way we've been inching up, people like 410, 420, 430, it's gonna turn back around. And I said we're gonna double top. And now as people are starting to be more accepting of the market, and they're like, we're gonna double top, I say we're going to spy 500, maybe 600. The signs of the recession are gone. Jobless claims coming down. 
Fewer people are getting fired and laid off. GDP quarter over quarter growth is positive growth rate, which means we're growing the economy. People are getting work, people are, less people are getting their jobs back and the jolts were actually going up as well. So more jolts, more job openings, jobs are being created. Fewer people laid off. We're growing our GDP, it's growing. And the continuing jobless claims means the people that have been unemployed are going back to work, which means A, they're back to spending, B, they're back to putting their money in 401k, C, they're less risky as borrowers and the bank's liquid credit uh, doesn't dry up. As long as people are going back to work, they're less risky and banks are more willing to loan out and give credit. And when people have credit, they spend more than they make. And that boosts the economy. All the signs of the recession are gone. They're gone. They're gone. This is great data. This is great data. You cannot not if anyone is bearish under these things, the basic premise of recession is lowering GDP and raising unemployment. And not only that, inflation's under control. There's nothing in the way between here and 500 SPY. It makes me excited. And yesterday on Trading Camp, I was on the podcast. They were like, Matt, you've been killing it all year. Tell us what's up. And at the end, they were like, this is the thing really we want to talk to you about. You made another bold prediction. You said SPY 500, and I think I interrupted him and said, well, actually, I'm thinking it could be 600. And they go, yeah, we see all that you're posting. You, you got to be the biggest bull in the world now. Tell us why. And, you know, that's crazy, right? And I go, I know I remember last year when we, we had the podcast, I was on it last year. I was like, you know, market's bottoming, we're about to turn around. And now I'm like, like and I made a deal with them. They go, we're going to check back when SPY gets to 500. And see if you're right. And I go, if I'm wrong, I'll come on the podcast with the clown mask on. The inverted yield curve, people preparing for the recession. That's it. People preparing for the recession. I, I, I wouldn't put it, I wouldn't put it past traders to have inverted. You, are you talking about the two to 10 cotton? I wouldn't put it past them because we're sitting on the largest short that we've seen across the board. Even Commando Trader shows that. And the longest time. The short here is massive. And this is why I want everybody to learn this. This is our fundamentals. Market's bullish. Today, these are these are decent dips to buy. Everything's looking great. Resilience is great. Um, S&P resilience, be careful. Um, if it drops to zero or below, then the market's going to get all choppy again today. Look at the short that's built up. You, you would imagine that people that are bearish this economy have made bear bets, but the economic data is proving them wrong. That, that curve is going to un, un, un-invert. It's going to revert. It's not even a real word. Of course, people are rolling their money over. But when inflation comes down, yeah. As, as Bradley is, as Brady is saying, has a lot to do with. So here's one thing. There's a, the market itself, there's people that are betting on, on longer term problems, okay? They see something I don't. Well, I don't know. They they started betting in August of last year when Rocket Scooter was calling a bottom right here. So I guess the world started betting against the recession, betting on the recession, and positional data showed a bottom. And we kept saying bottom, 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 bottom. People are still betting. I I don't know. Let's just let's just elephant in the room. We're smarter than all these people. We see it before they do. We are better traders than them. These are all people that are betting on doom and gloom. And we have a tech bubble about to pull us out of this uh, market dip. So I don't know. Maybe we're just more we're smarter than everyone. Because look at this. Short squeeze. Short squeeze over the next month. We're parabolically going to rally. Get ready for it. Get ready for it. And the bull support is there until October still. Isn't that crazy? So exciting. 
Uh, I said that we'll reach 500 before we reach 400. So I think that's that's the race. Ah, that's it. What's the best way to convert the state into trading? Uh, okay, so imagine that the last 100 years you were a trader. You want to buy Apple stock. What do you do? You go in there and you read up on Apple. You listen to the board guidance. You pay attention to the earnings calls. You read all the news, follow all the stuff. Develop a fundamental bias. This is a this is a better bias than fundamental. This is fundamental bias plus because you're actually seeing how people are positioned around the actual state of the economy. So first and foremost, here's a lesson. Everybody take some notes. Ready? Every time, every time you are trying to create a bias for yourself in the market, you must decide a top-down approach on how you view the market. Let's start. Number one, fundamentally, okay? Think about this. If I were to just put all of my money into the stock market, and just sit here for a year. I like to look about a year or so out. Will it go up or down? Let's do an A, B thing. Fundamentally, everyone make their best guess. A year from now, will the stock market be higher or lower than it is today? Just everyone throw out, a, throw out an answer. Let's play it. Let's play a game. Throw out your favorite answer. So first and foremost, think about what you think a year out is going to look like. Be an investor. I'm going to buy this house and it's going to go up in a year. I'm going to buy a car and it's going to come down 25% a year and depreciate. Everyone throw out your favorite answer. We're gonna, I'm going to tell you how to do this. Best way to convert this data into trading is it. Longer term bias is up or down. I think most people think up, up, up. Okay. All right. All right, you lazy folks. Type in, get some more, get some more, uh, get some more feedback in here. What do you think? Up, down, up, down, same place. Have a fundamental bias. Okay, if you don't have one, support it with something. Economic data. For the most part, without bad news, without economic pressure, without problems, markets tend to just always go up. So are there problems? There were problems. Are there problems now? And we just went through all the data. So fundamentally, make yourself a bias. What's going on? GDP is up. These are the two major things you ever want to look at. A recession is defined by lowering GDP and high unemployment. That's it. Companies are firing people off, which slows down the economy. That's it. When people go back to work, more money, more people spending, more people paying their bills on time, more credit given out by banks. Easy as that. When those people go back to work and they're not sitting there doing nothing, GDP is going up because they're making more stuff. It means the demand for products are going up. They're hiring more people to make more stuff to meet the demand for more stuff. Then your economy is growing. So the economy check is growing because GDP in the last two ticks. Actually, the GDP last seven ticks has been the growth rates positive. GDP is up. Okay, so we, I'm going to take the bet that we go up. GDP's up. Uh, unemployment is down. Filings. So the people that are able to work and where we're working and getting fired or we're working and we're fired and can't get their jobs back and not get their jobs back. So basically, I'll just put you for unemployment. Recession, mechanics are good. As long as that goes up and as long as that comes down, um, I'm going to choose we're going up somewhere. Okay, let's apply this to trading. So fundamentally, we're in a bull market. Great, so if I just throw my money somewhere and wait long enough, it's gonna go up. Second, let's look at the positions within a, a, an amount of time. Okay. We start the COT, right? COT shows a wound up short. We have a longer long. So when you look at it, and, and dealers are negative. So one of the safety nets is gone. So we have safety net. I gotta go through our fundamentals video. Safety net one. Dealers greater than zero. So now the dealers are short, but doesn't mean it that doesn't mean anything because number two is uh liquid market. Okay, everybody remember the class? If the longs are getting longer and the shorts are getting shorter, everyone type in chat. Liquid or illiquid, which one is it? 
more people longing the market and more people shorting the market via cot obviously is it liquid or more li liquid or illiquid do we still have a liquid market people are willing to buy willing to buy willing to buy longer and longer and longer people are shorting 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 active participants in the stock market are growing faster very liquid and liquid markets do not crash okay never do liquid markets crash so not only do we have a long-term fundamental bias of the market slightly going up we also have a positional bias that so i'm going to say market going up in a year and let's change that to one two no crash between now and then without an event no crash so far this is a good check and check so I can plant my money and safely think there's no crash. Okay, number two, positions. Let's get a more some more granularity. Position prediction. Aha. Liquid markets do not crash. They do not. The safety net of crash. Crash safety net. Okay, liquid markets do not crash. Position prediction. What do we use for position prediction, everybody? Rocket scooter. Monthly map says the following. For, for the next three months, the bull side is becoming more bullish. The next three months, the bear side is getting squeezed until July. Making a second attempt and getting squeezed until November. So squeeze in July, squeeze in October. So the bear position is essentially, which is the COT. Remember, we're going to predict the COT. COT was drawing short up until now. So the COT is short with a little bit of a squeeze. The squeeze is going to continue. These are inverse. So squeeze is going to continue like that. The blue line is going to go there. Shorts are going to attempt to short again, 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 and they're going to get squeezed a second time. So now we're predicting the COT. Shorts are going to get squeezed in two waves, wave one, wave two over the next three months. So fundamentally, this is one year. Positions, this is about three months. Bulls are going to long, 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 take some profit, long, 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 take some profit, long. Bulls are gonna be, remember the bulls position been going higher and higher and higher. Bears position lower, lower, lower. Bulls are going to long, 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 take some profit, long, 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 take some profit, long, 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 long. That green line is continuing to go up because the positions are getting deeper. That blue line is going to get squeezed as well. They're both pointing up in certain directions, and it's liquid the whole way out. The only time it's illiquid is when they're both pointing up, which is now. Illiquid to the upside as shorts are getting squeezed. So when everybody's buying, markets rally parabolically. So the most part, you have two periods of illiquidity and they both point up. The period where it's not illiquid, they both fan out. And again, I mean, sorry, not when it's liquid, they both fan out and it stabilizes. So liquid market, illiquid to the upside, illiquid to the upside. As long as there's willing buyers, especially shorts covering and longs buying, markets are tending to go up. So next three months, we've got squeeze. Plus rally. You got both of them. Uh, one, two waves. So there you go. Year out, I'm pointing up. Positional data, I'm looking. It's a liquid market. It's not going to crash. And I got a couple of squeezes along the way with maybe some dips to buy when the market's slightly volatile. But other than that, there's no volatility other than a couple of spot instances. Okay, good. So now I formulated a bias, oops. And so that's what you do. How do you apply this to trading? How about whenever you used to trade something, did you ever think long-term before you come in here and analyze your day-to-day your -day trading? You just have to like know what's going on. Every day I just recheck these things to make sure we're still okay, right? As the fundamental data starts to turn around, I might change my outlook. As the positional data starts to turn around, I might change my outlook. But so far, one year up, three months up, squeeze up fast so all things are pointing up fast okay now let's apply this trading
Got my bias. Does it make sense? Summer is here. The smell of the grill. The smell. Good. Okay. So that's how you do it. Looks like DD's breaking. Uh, DD's broken on Nasdaq. So it looks like we're irrational on Nasdaq side, anyways. Again, these mean reversion days are not clearly bullish or bearish. They try to break out, and this one failed. It's hard to say how this works. Obviously, mean reversions. You touch wall, touch middle, becomes random. Just be careful today. Um, but let's go to trading, right? So let me double check volatility because VIX also has a 30-day outlook. So fundamental is one year out. Position's three months out. VIX is targeting a 30 day window which actually goes today 23 and 37 around the 30 day i'll look for the spx so vix is a month level view what's volatility look like well we talk about the triple b which is one of our indicators we do and as you see in the bottom left of the screen right here um vix is in contango which is a sign of a bull market typically and in decay as long as vix stays below triple b then we've got a nice clean decay non-volatile market going higher if VIX drops above here then the market's going to get volatile okay so right now VIX is kind of right on the edge but let's look at the monthly map no volatility for the next two weeks and the volatility coming up after that so basically in the month VIX is likely to decay which supports the squeeze theory as well right so VIX um we're at triple b so I'm still kind of like cautious right and overshooting pivots and things like that are still the thing uh, and we're going to, I'm going to make strong day trading signals to make my trade and that's it. So VIX at triple B, it fixes below, right? That supports a parabolic rally with no volatility. Monthly map on the 30 day window shows that there's no volatility as well. Two weeks clean. So in the next two weeks, we've got really no volatility. So I don't expect the market to collapse in a two-week window i don't expect it to collapse in a one-year window or a three-month window neither of these show a collapse and now in a two-week window i don't expect a collapse either because the volatility the space between the bull and bear zone is the expected move uh of that of that period so these are day-to-day -day periods so day-to-day -day, there's practically no volatility until we get to here volatility when the put the call ratio is greater than one the spx tends to mean downside thin markets. The market is very liquid on the COT and all these other things. And liquidity is the inverse of volatility anyways. So not volatile means liquidity is going to maintain a week out. So not only do we look at current liquidity, we're going to, we're going to predict positions and predict liquidity. Markets going to be liquid as well, which means tiny, small moves, which means every dip I can buy, every pop I can short, and the market's probably just going to inch its way up. So now I've got an idea of the whole thing. A year out, we're going up. Liquid market, don't crash. Positional prediction, we have the potential for a squeeze and a rally in a couple of waves. As long as VIX crushes below triple B, it's going to be clean with very little dips. And in the next two weeks, clean and liquid. Which means the market's going to move slow to the downside and there's not going to be big Vs to, to get up and on. All right, liquidity uh, liquid markets have smaller consolidating moves. As you see, day after day, it's not really that excitable of a day. It's not big red and big green candles. It's just going to inch its way forward. And then we have news events to watch out for. So as long as these volatile weeks don't produce bad news to collapse a market, um, it's basically going to inch its way higher and keep going and just basically look like that. That's how I feel. Now, I got all that in my head, right? And I just remember that every day I just hold the same analysis things don't change every day for that and now how do i play at the trading well let's look at the day right let's go let's pick a trading day are you following now they say how somebody said how do i play that to trading they say the market's not that volatile every dip is getting bought every dip is getting bought little tiny v's very tiny tight trading days trusting that the market's not bearish i see those big red candles and i'm jumping in saying first and foremost you fall to hedge pressure if you didn't have any of this to trade with, right? And to turn all these things off. I bet you a million people out there that are trading probably see this red candle and they're like, oh shit, I need to short this. This looks bad. Trading down. Here's the drop I'm getting on the short. So first and foremost, if you didn't have Rocket Scooter, that analysis that you just did, 
My the monthly map should tell you there's no volatility, right? So volatility would, would incorporate that the V's on the dips are getting bigger. And so the market's just very comfortable sitting where it is. So if you chase this on momentum, you don't understand that volatility is not present. Every dip is getting bought up. Are you starting to figure, follow this time? You know, you ask that question. Every dip is getting bought up. Every dip is getting bought up. Like the market is not collapsing because of all that stuff we just talked about. Every dip is getting bought up. I mean, it's like you might have some down days or whatever, but every dip is getting bought up from this analysis we just did. That tells me that there are so many people willing to buy that they're impatient and jumping in. There's so many shorts willing to cover that they can't wait for a dip to get out. So if anybody here is gets scared and chopped out of this market, you didn't do proper fundamental analysis. So if you dip like today to something, let's put our let's put our tools on the market on the on the thing now. No volatility, market's liquid, it's not gonna crash, and there's a big red candle that came after the new home sales, right at hedge pressure. Oh shit, there's that dip. Let's buy it. Let me take the long. And even so, you made a little bit of profit. You see how that works? Everybody, that's the point. You wanna be the one person at the at the water cooler at work saying 500 spy? Everybody's laughing. I went to a wedding last year in October and everybody's talking about crypto. They're like, oh, I bought crypto and it was crashing. I think I'm going to buy the dip. And I was like, like, what do you think, Matt? Aren't you a trader? <laughs> Just like, I don't want to have a talk with you guys and ruin our relationship. Your future family. Sounds like a great, great idea, fellas. I don't want to be the person giving a speech at a wedding. <laughs> In the circle of my future brother-in-law and everyone, I was like, I love you guys, I promise, but I'm like, yeah, I don't buy crypto. It's just not my thing. But people don't think deeper than charts. You need to think deeper than charts. I'm going to buy the dip. There's no layers of fundamental analysis and a thought like that. It's just, you know, enthusiasts, they want to get in on an investment, then that's up to them. Um... I don't want to ruin friendships by telling them. I think these are all wealthy guys anyway, so I don't want to say anything, but I was like, ah, crypto's not my thing. So the idea is you got to think deeper, right? Does everyone see how this works? Do you see how healthy that analysis was? And, and if you and if you did this the same way I did, I'm sitting here like pointing at the fence like Babe Ruth saying there is a, a recession could be over. Not just the market's going up, that the recession could be over. Nobody's saying that. I'm the first. Our chart tweeted something today that somebody said, this could be the worst recession of your lifetime. These people, I don't know what they're doing, but the homework is very clear. This is very simple stuff. If there's a recession, we'll start seeing the signs. GDP starts turning down or unemployment starts turning up. I'm going to start changing my thesis as well at the top. If volatility starts picking up, then people are going to lack certainty in this market. Why is volatility down? Because the, the smarter investors in the world see the same thing I do. Why are people going longer and longer and longer? They're as long as they were when the market broke all-time highs. Can you see this? See how long? Why are people this long if there's a recession? They see the same obvious things I do. Economic growth, jobs being created, people going back to work, people not getting laid off as fast. Who would bet against that? Companies don't hire someone back to fire them the next week. It's not a day trade. You hire someone back because you want to keep them on for at least six months to a year or longer, at minimum. It's not like you're just going to hire somebody in next week and go, psych, and eh, we jumped the gun. We actually don't need you. Sorry. Economic data is like so slow to change. These are trends that are coming in month to month looking great. You don't have GDP growth in a recession. You don't grow the economy in a recession. You don't. The recession is when you slow it down, you grow less, and you shrink. And so I don't understand why people don't do this simple analysis. Maybe just because no one in trading that teaches anything was an engineer. The data is so easy to, to put in front of your face. 
and then watch it as it changes. And that's it. Couldn't be easier to see if you're looking. I mean, that's it, right? So how would I apply this in my trading? I feel safe buying every dip. I feel safe longing every bull long up. I feel unsafe shorting. Now let's go to the next level. DD is 0.8. That number has been above. It's opened above 50 every single day for a year. It has fallen below 50 two times, and it barely fell below 50 both of those times. It fell to like 49, 48, 47, and then fought around 50. DD being strongly bullish shows that the stocks are stuck in bull territory. Now let's talk about liquidity maps. Stocks are bullish. Long-term outlook is bullish. Market's liquid. Market's not volatile. Short squeeze is happening. And now every bull long up again, I'm going to take a stab at it to the long side. Are we in bull structure? Oh, absolutely. Look where monthly hedge pressure is. I only short against monthly hedge pressure when we open below it. When the market's getting negative gamma on the monthly side, I short. I never short, period, unless the structure's there. So not only am I not trying to short the market for it to fall like an idiot against all this bullish data, but I also don't take any of these red legs either, and that's how we apply it to trading, not only because I, I only take these legs here, I do the, the monthly hedge pressure short. But even so, with DD being positive and bullish, I'm not going to take any of those. I'm going to eliminate some more trades from my diet. I don't take any of them. I want bare structure to short the market. So not only that, I just clean up my liquidity map. So how else am I applying this to trading? Let's go. If we open below monthly, I will short. Open below monthly, I will short. Open below monthly, I will short. Sure. If we break monthly, that's the transition into a bear market. I might be in a long and get squeezed out, and then maybe I won't chase it that day. So let's just even say I won't even take the break case. As you see, now I've eliminated my diet to what I really want to do. And just about every day, I have long setups. So I'm either going to long this market every single day, every single day, or sit out. I'm not sure. Mean reversions. I, we've got years of rallying probably. I'm going to miss out on a week of mean reversion choppy trading. I'm not in any hurry to go in there and make trades. So let me just eliminate all liquidity pockets from my diet too by choice. And eh, let's just fuck, fuck the choppy shit. Let me just trade the good stuff. I'll chase a BLU with a tight stop. I will... Bounce off a monthly hedge pressure when it gets closer to the end of the month, right? The end of the month is when you start to see monthly hedge pressure interact. Just as a double check, how does resilience look? Monthly resilience. Oh, monthly resilience, 45%, 39%. So hitting yellow is a very strong support if we were there. Very strong support. Monthly hedge pressure resilience is the tiebreaker there. Do you, if I get a BLD against monthly, that's that's like a golden setup too. That's a big good trade right there with, with it being so strong. So... You hit these at the end of the month. You get close to here at the end of the month as well. So the most part, the s and is probably just gonna have a bunch of these, a bunch of these, and a bunch of these, maybe. Actually, no, no downs. We're not gonna see a down for a while. We're gonna be up for pretty much a long time. So either bear short up, bull long ups, bear long ups, etc., and maybe BSU maybe towards the end of the month. So I can say the SPY comfortably is gonna be one of these four liquidity maps. Because we're, we're not going to see a down for a while. I mean, the market is very strong. That monthly hedge pressure is way off the map. So let's go ahead and just remove these from our diet as well. Narrow it down even further. So now I just got hedge pressure long, hedge pressure long. Breakthrough hedge pressure, take a long. Wow, I've just got three trades I'm going to do for the next quarter. Longing off a of hedge pressure. <laughs> All right, I don't know. I've dropped my mic so many times, I think I broke it. Are we, are we on the same page here? It's a tiny long, but it's like that is all I got. I'm long off a hedge pressure. I'm sitting the fuck out. We cool? We cool, G? We cool, everybody? That's it. Top-down approach. That's it. So that's the thing I think about. If the market breaks through hedge pressure and I don't feel comfortable, just get out of the way. Easy as that. Try again the next day. All four days, hedge pressure is breaking to the upside. 
one day didn't make it or sorry bull zone one day didn't make it one day rallied one day rallied dipped and then came up at the end of the day and today is slowly moving up does that work does that does everybody see how that works and now I'm seeing all the all the YouTubers and all the Twitter people finally starting to become bullish and now starting to ride this bull wave. But you heard it here first. Listen, all this look, I trade circles around all those people. My performance is 20 times better than all those people come in riding the coattails of the bull market. I was the first one in. You want to be like that. Don't be don't be a chaser because you're just chasing because it's hot. It's popular. Don't. Follow people because they don't have a good formulated bias like that. If you don't have a bias like that, you're going to fuck yourself over too. Make sure you have your thoughts wrapped around the market from the top down. Most people, their top down is this. What's the daily chart look like? Okay. What's the hourly chart look like? Okay. What's the minute chart look like? Okay. There's my top down approach. The charts all look good. Okay. You're not an investor. You're a fool. You're... You're an idiot. The idea is that you have to understand fundamentals, positioning, and then apply it to your day trade. So somebody says, how do you apply this to day trading? I feel comfortable buying every single dip I see. Within a day or two, it's snapping right back to the middle. No volatility, liquid market, shorts can't wait to get out, and let's just go to futures. What did I say before I even looked at the chart? Is that every single dip is going to snap back to the middle? Here we go. Snap back to middle, snap back to middle. No volatility, no volatility, no volatility, no volatility. The bigger dip snapped back to middle. I mean, I'm just bull set up or sit out, bull set up or sit out, bull set up or sit up, bull set up or sit out. And I just already know how I'm going to be trading from all that analysis I did. So analysis in the back of my head won't really change that much. It'll take months for any of those top down things to change. Do you see any crash days that didn't snap back to middle, snap back to middle, snap back to middle, sell off day, snap back. Do you not see how that's, that's where I'm telling you, right? That's how you can perceive that. As a matter of fact, that bias has been the same for me for the last tons of months since like March, since we dipped. Once that volatility cleaned up, Ash and I, when we have our phone calls, we're just like, the market's not volatile anymore. It's like, I love these days. I love these, these regimes. And the lack of volatility, all the dips are getting bought up. Even the bigger ones snap back to middle within one to two days. Snap back to middle, snap back to middle. It's every single, the short squeeze potential is so big, people can't wait to get out. So if I just survive long enough, every bull trade I make ultimately will pay out. So let me not trade every single day that looks kind of in and trade only the days that look good and trade a medium to small size if those lights are red. Ultimately, if I trade small enough, I can just hold two or three days and trust that the market's probably gonna turn around if I'm swing trading. And that's not changing anytime soon. So that's how you do it. That's how you do it. That fundamental gives me the feel of the market. The positions give me the feel of how the market's going to change over time. This liquid market's going to stay liquid, if not become more liquid. Until those shorts start squeezing. And then it's illiquid to the upside. And look at this. COT as of this last week. Look at this. You see that tick up? 538 to 380, that's hundreds of thousands of contracts covered short over the course of this week. Shorts can't hold on any longer. They're squeezing. But do you know that we saw that short building up? And haven't I been saying all year that Rocket Skier is predicting a short squeeze? And we got it. See, that's what I'm saying. That's why our platform, that's why I think like two weeks ago we were talking about, yeah, we celebrated 4,000 user accounts. We're at 4,400 now. People are piling in to use our platform, and we appreciate you guys staying here because you're realizing you're looking into the future with positional data. We predicted a short squeeze. There it is. You all saw it here. I talked about it for many, many, many months. Our positional data predicted a short squeeze before a long sell-off, and we got it. When we said bulls are getting stronger, bears are getting weaker, the bear side just popped and there's their weakness. That's how you read a monthly map. Monthly map forecasted that. And now the community of traders reflected that sell off. 
That's what I want everybody to see. We say bull side getting stronger, bear side getting weaker. And we said that for months and we just watched that bear side just build a bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger short. But Rocket Skier was like, that's not going to last. It's a short squeeze. It's going to pop. And you see that? You, do y'all see that? Looks like there's some smart bulls in the room even buying here. It's about on a short squeeze, right? We're seeing this liquid market become more liquid, and we know which side's going to buckle first. The shorts. All right, that's it. Tell all your friends about Rock Security to support the development. Can't wait to have futures trading. All right, we're going to have a Zoom call in about an hour and a half. Um, make sure you come to that. We're going to go over futures trading. I'm going to show you everything in the platform. I'm going to teach you Pro Plus only, so you must upgrade to Pro Plus for today's Zoom call. If you're in the extended trial, sorry, you can't come. Uh, but if you are a paid member straight up, we're going to, we're going to show this to you and go a little more details. Um, and we're going to vote and change things on the platform you're going to use. So pro plus are the only people that are going to have futures trading, a Dom account data, all that stuff. How MHP res is calculated? Okay. Sure. It is static for all things. I get my little pencil here. Okay. Similar to how half gap resilience is calculated, monthly hatch resilience is calculated the same way. A uh, similar way. MHP, let's do this Apple. And Facebook, Meta, whatever. I can't give away all the math, but I'm gonna give you the generalization. So there's all the monthly hedge pressures, right? And here's trading. Ooh, that's a huge green dot. Okay. Um, if all of the tickers are trading exactly on their monthly hedge pressure, and Apple were to move above, All of them are sitting flat. Monthly res would be 100. If Apple were below zero, and all the ones were flat, monthly res would be minus 100. There's the scale. The market cap above and below, monthly hedge pressure. Now, there's a sensitivity built into it, just like there's sensitivity built into it here for half gap resilience. If Apple were to trade just like that, Monthly resilience would also do this. If all the rest of them stayed flat on the, on the line. So the activity is tiny shifts above or below monthly hedge pressure. It's the same sensitivity model that we use through half gap resilience. Does that make sense, Caddy? Remember how when, if, if Apple, pretend this is the Apple's uh, redistribution zone. If Apple were to like crash through it like this, resilience would be like, like that, right? It's just here, it'll take that sharp steep. And if Apple was like just playing along right there, resilience goes like really big right at the middle. We took the same sensitivity model around half gap. So if you're trading through on MHP, so it's very sensitive to monitor market cap that's breaking MHP, market cap immediately flipping to negative gamma on the monthlies. So like if all the stocks were flat, it's looking at this. Like if all the stocks dipped to here and bounced and dipped to here and bounced, 
and monthly res was like nice and steady. They fell to here and bounced, fell to here and bounced. Then monthly res would be like this. And then right when it got to here, it take a, it would take a steep climb like that. Like a sharp V it wouldn't, it wouldn't like V down. Like this is V down like that. It would just kind of like slowly drift. And then once that, and then if, if Apple were to break and Meta were to bounce, then it's using those sensitivity equations and just balancing the market cap. So the amount of market cap um, flux through monthly hedge pressure, just like this is the market cap flux through the gap. So if the majority of the market cap and, and we add, and, it's, and there's more of the math I can't tell you, but we add, uh, we have a, another algorithm that goes into here that looks at the severity. Uh, well, let's look at the severity. Let me look at a better word for that. If you break through monthly hedge pressure, that's different than if you open edit and trade higher or open above it and bounce off of it. Those three conditions are each handled slightly differently based on another model that's built in. So breaks are, breaks are considered differently than bounces. And so, uh, in lack of better words, we apply more weight to breaks to be very accurate to show sentiment changes. Cause really what monthly hedge pressures is, and that's what, something that we don't do in half gap resilience. So there's extra math. Um, it looks at them slightly differently. If some stock is breaking monthly hedge pressure, the sensitivity model changes a little bit. That's the, I guess I'm giving away too much information, but yeah. Like if that happens versus that happens, resilience, like, like, and they both end up like Apple does the same thing. Resilience in both of these cases would be slightly different. The, res the resilience on the left case would be lower than the resilience on the right, ca right case because Apple breaking through hedge and moving up 10 points above versus bouncing and moving 10 points above, resilience would end up in two different places. Slightly higher because of that. The break, and there's something we look at when that happens to give it more weight. I can't tell you what that is. To be more accurate, to look at the actual uh, gamma hedging. When you have a capitulation flip of a position, that's really important than people not changing their position at all. So the idea is that hedge pressure breaks are very important. And so slightly different, but different enough. So this is just telling you that the bulk of the stock market is either bouncing or breaking through monthly hedge pressure and a scale of negative 100 to positive 100. So 43% uh, up, so 144 divided by 200, which is 72% of the market cap is above or breaking above monthly hedge. So when you see spikes like this in the white line, it usually means you're dancing around monthly hedge, I mean a half cap. If you see like spikes like up and down in yellow, it means you're bouncing off monthly hedge pressure, which as you see, it's just nice and steady. There's not a lot of monthly hedge breaks. Stocks are positioned so comfortably above it, you're not gonna see much. Not a lot, look, 15 stocks. And the hedge was right. Wait, hold on, sorry. Yeah, 38 stocks total. It's not a lot, right? The reason it's slowly starting to climb because stocks one by one are starting to break through the monthly hedge pressure to the upside. So to me, it's the same thing as everything else. It's a tiebreaker when you get the monthly hedge. When you when the SPY touches it or the NAS, the QQQ touches it, you consult 
the monthly hedge pressure resilience to see what the tiebreaker is. So it's not even used right now because monthly hedge on queues and it's by so far away. Easy peasy. Yeah, that good enough? APN? It's a similar aggregate to hedge to, uh, to half gap resilience. With a with a different sensitivity algorithm due to breaks uh, around the line than uh, the half gap one. So the answer is, if monthly hedge was was anywhere inside of here, I'd be comfortable taking a long. So when I go back to liquidity map, I would say any longs off of monthly hedge, like this BLD, I would certainly take that long if yellow res is positive. So remember when I eliminated my diet to say I'm just trading this and that and that and that for the most part? A lot of these have interaction points at monthly. Like we, if we have a bear short up and we bounce off a of monthly, I'd long if that's above zero. If we have that trade, I'd long if that's above zero, right? So it helps me take a, take a trade on these legs. This has that tiebreaker resilience to take the long with. This one has that tiebreaker. This one has that tiebreaker. So a lot of so monthly res was designed to give me extra guidance on the monthly hedge trade legs. Consequently, when there's a bear market or a bear break, I'm going to use monthly resilience to give me that chase. And I say I'm very rarely going to take the bear short ups. If I hit that and it breaks through and monthly res is less than zero, like an example, bear short up. This is a very important transitional bull market to bear market transition. This is like what you see at the top of a bull market. Why? Because your bull long up goes up and up and up and up. And all of a sudden the bear starts stepping in, the bull starts stepping out. So you still have long pressure, um, bull long up transitions to bear long up. So the bear starts stepping in and now you're still hedging in bear territory. And then the bear long up transitions to bear short up when you start getting that short hedging to go with it. So traditional pro progression, a bull market, bull long up, bear long up, right? Bear position starts to take over. And then bear short up. Now you get bear, bear hedging take over. So that's like rally, 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 chop, chop, chop. And monthly hedge pressure is like right there at that point. Bear short ups like this. And so when you're hitting that monthly hedge pressure, the question is, do we collapse or do we rally? Then when you start transitioning to bear short ups, I don't think we've ever talked about the progression, um, but you're going to use monthly hedge resilience to, to decide this peaking, topping patterns. Bear short ups are very much topping patterns. Look at that. We have one right now in NASDAQ. So now, do you trade off a monthly hedge? Does it break and crash or not? And we're not even close to it, right? It's pretty cool. So the progression typically bear short ups are usually when markets top out. It's like you got monthly hedge floating and you are in a bear zone. You have bearish hedge pulling back. So usually after markets have topped and they're starting to pull back a little bit, Bear short ups are kind of what you see because it's it's still got that bullish pressure if you open in between the two hedges, which um, actually we were bear long up today that fell to bear short up. So we're like this that fell inside of here. Now the question is, do we hold monthly hedge? Well, it's so far away. We're not even going to play with it today. So now we can see that NASDAQ is exhibiting a topping pattern. Maybe that can do that in today's session. Bear short up is that, okay, we're topping and does NASDAQ collapse or just healthily pull back? Healthily pull back monthly hedge resilience is, well, look at NASDAQ. It's at three. Ooh, that's not that strong. If this were to fall there today, this would certainly be below zero. So now I can say, man, NASDAQ might actually fall today. And if we get there, I wouldn't buy that dip because already it's it's right, right on the edge. Right? I need to be greater than 10 when it's irrational and it's three. So clearly, if NASDAQ QQQs fall this much, we wouldn't be buying monthly hedge, right? So let's look at SPY. SPY is bull long up still. So SPY hasn't finished topping yet. Let's look at IWM. Remember, bear, bear short up 
is that transitional thing that really makes you and now you can see that nasdaq peaked out and starting to pull back spy is moving up at a medium pace and russell's moving up at a fast pace this is just healthy sector rotating especially when you have hedge breaks pointing a different direction also sector rotating also when you have index divergence light turned on also sector rotating this is a healthy rotational cycle out of tech and into russell and into s p another reason bull market stays bullish people don't rotate from from big strong tech stocks into riskier russell stocks unless they are very confident the equities market's place to go for their money people don't diversify unless they feel safe with their first investment so it's another reason the bull market strong is the sector rotation when you see hedge pressures break in different directions it's also a sign of people rolling out of one and rolling into another so it tells the story tech is kind of peaked out and it's pulling back a little bit russell's ready to go let's check a monthly map see if the russell is going to look strong for the next couple of months we can even look at that today i mean russell is the strongest of the two look at this look at this mofo russell is a straight non-volatile line this is a short squeeze russell's the opportunity if we if you miss on the SP and nasdaq russell's it russell is the trade I think I'm start trading Russell now on my challenge count. The way I, every time I see this just makes me happy. The short squeeze is gonna be big in Russell, right? And it hasn't moved yet. As people start selling out a Nasdaq, they're gonna start rotating in the Russell pretty strongly. Easy to see. Okay, maybe I'll start trading Russell. When well, that tells that story. People are rotating very strongly out of Nasdaq still not rotating out of this too hard and rotating into that and even look at this when i was saying that look and that's exactly what i said and that's exactly how the positions show russell's the, russell's the big hitter for this year as people safely roll into other things that haven't moved yet look at this this is the bat this is this is the mover right here xlf leading today Ooh. right so you see some healthy sector rotations and as you see the xlf uh is the leader today right people are finding opportunities and things that haven't moved yet and as again gdp is going up and people going back to work and jobs are being created the xlf is going to be the hot thing for the year banking is going to be the thing that looks good if, if lending gets a little more liquid they start lending money out love it okay everybody Upgrade to Pro Plus. Send me a message if you need help to upgrade to Pro Plus. We're about to start rolling out futures. We're going to roll out futures selected. First of all, we're going to roll out futures just to lifetime folks first to get a test case. Then we're going to roll out to the rest of Pro Plus. Maybe like a week after, maybe two weeks after. We always roll things out to have our lifers test things out first. You can jump in the lifetime, be part of that group. Feel free to do so. You want to make sure you're here for today's Zoom call, Pro Plus only. We'll go over the futures and how it's going to work and do a lot of stuff on that. Um, get some feedback. And then, of course, I have you all all here. Today, I went through the education today on, on the YouTube. Instead of having a Zoom call, we'll be over the same stuff. So don't need to come back for it. Uh, the, the Discord will automatically upgrade you when you can connect your Discord, which the next release will do so. If you upgrade it and you need the Pro Plus role, just send me a message or send Slacks a message. And we'll give it to you. Okay. Pro Plus, you can lock in for less than 100 bucks a month. And that will stay like that forever. We're going to cut that off after we launch futures. So if you're on the fence, lock it in and then cancel if you don't want it later. Because once it rolls out, it's 200 bucks a month and you don't get it. You don't get the deal. No deals anymore. We weren't going to make that announcement until... Uh, until that day we like to surprise people but i'm going to give you a head start when futures comes out no more upgrade deals you want to lock in grandfather for life you got to do it now you got two weeks to do it or you'll be out one of the free trial ends you got to upgrade to 199 a month for the full price you may have another deal after that but you won't qualify as you've already been through the trial it'll be for new subscribers only and new trials only and it won't be as good as this Everyone that upgraded will tell you that with a smile, it was pretty damn good. That's why I want to thank you for being early supporters of the group. So we love y'all here at Rock Scooter. 
Uh, but just like any trader, just like any good trade, when you're first, you get the bigger reward. Being first is everything in trading. So, you gotta be first, especially in Rock Scooter deals. We love you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Can't wait. Finally, the first time I ever showed the futures, Dom. Futures order ent entry, futures login. We're going to have automatic connection to Discord. Trade through over 80 futures brokers. When this comes out, we're like two weeks away. I'm already playing with it on the test server, and it looks, it looks super cool. Um, super excited about that. We're going to have broker services to go with it. You'll have a broker one phone call away. Uh, pick up the phone. They're willing to help you get through in your futures journey. Do everything you can here in Rock Scooter. Trade all your brokers in one place. That is the goal. Like, I think you better than that. So make sure you lock in that Pro Plus deal today. If you don't know what it is, send me a message in Discord. I'll teach you how to get there. We have lifetime, yearly, and monthly options for that. We'll let, make sure nobody gets left behind. Uh, when features come out, we'll automate your DD bands. We're going to automate red lines, yellow lines, catalysts, and risk intervals all together on your charts in one place. You'll be able to put them side by side. And I can't wait to be able to do that with you guys. Love you. I'll see you all later.